Welcome to the Black Script Storytellers. My name is Kevin Marable, and today we have a special guest with us. Uh, her name is Lisa Renee Marshall, right? Yes, that's correct. All right. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I like to start off every conversation that I have with a very simple question. Uh, for some people, it, it might be difficult to answer, but um, yeah, it's a very simple question. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. And that question is, who is Lisa Renee Marshall? Lisa Renee Marshall is an artist, a creative, a dreamer, a mother. Um, and I'm just trying to make my dreams come true. And I will be doing this, I'm pretty sure, until the day that I die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It. And so you are an actor, writer, director, um, mm -hmm. and you come from theater. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, I got my start in musical theater. Okay. Um, I hone my skills at uh, the very reputable DC Repertory Company. I started there when I was 12. And uh, that's where we learned everything theater, you know, from acting, dancing, uh, vocals, to stage hands, to stage directing. We learned everything. And um, that's something that I really cherish because my my theater teachers, you know, it was very, very from the basics, mm -hmm. you know. And I just um, sometimes I kind of feel like um, the art is getting lost, so to speak, because. Um, I feel like people really aren't um, honing their skills and really diving into the art of acting, mm. you know, because it, it looks easy. <laughs> it looks easy. You know, you think you could just turn a camera on and just act. And so um, I really respect theater companies that are still teaching the basics and the art of becoming and of acting, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Once I, once, once I reached around 22, 23, I moved into um, auditioning for TV series, movies, things like that. Some of them stuck. And um, and now I am the stage director for DC Black Broadway. All right. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I play Nurse Rachel on Double Cross, hey. which is on the All Black Network. We're yes. Season five. Yes. Final season of Double Cross. If you guys have not yeah. checked it out. Please be sure to download All Black and binge watch Double Cross. Yes, please do. <laughs> okay, so um, you, you mentioned that you were on uh, a few other shows as you got into acting on camera. Um, are you comfortable with talking about a, some of those shows? Um, mostly, uh, let's see, I did, oh, this is way before some of you guys' times because this is in the 90s. Um, I was on Homicide Life on the Street. Okay. Opposite, uh, Daniel Baldwin um, and a few other, you know, quick one liners here and there. That's okay. Um, but yeah, but yeah, you know. Yeah. And so I'm and I'm still working on it. So. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have more of a stronghold on on, on the theater side um, mm -hmm. as of right now. Um, yeah. Are you currently in any plays that are um, ongoing? Yes, yeah, so we just finished uh, Grease with a Side of Mumble Sauce. I had the pleasure of directing that, but I also had um, I also had a role in that. Uh, we just did uh, earlier in 2023, we did The Giz, which was the DC version of The Wiz, at the infamous, like the historical Lincoln Theater in Washington, DC. Yeah. And so we have a residency with um, the Lincoln Theater. Mm -hmm. So next up, we're doing Chocolate City Records. The tickets just went on sale. Okay. And uh, that will be May, May 10th through the 12th. <laughs> okay. awesome. I'll be sure to post that in this interview as well. So that okay. way people um, can, can actually go to the link and purchase tickets. Yes, really like support black theater, you know, um, tickets are available at uh, Ticketmaster or you can go to the link in DC.com. But um, yeah, support Black theater because we're returning stronger and I'm just so excited. We're, we are working with some phenomenal talent. I feel like the best of the best came out to these auditions. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we start rehearsals this week. Well, that's exciting, man. Um, I'm sure, so you've had a lengthy career in theater um, and you got your start in theater. Uh, what, is, what about theater still excites you 
to this day? You can be, uh, it's so expressive. Mm -hmm. It's so exp expressive and it really keeps an actor on their toes because there are no takes. There, there's no take one, there's no take two. It's one take. You rehearse, you put your heart in it. You know, you're a lot of times you're doing improv. You, you, you stick close to the script, but sometimes you have to improvise, um, mm -hmm. you know, because anything can happen. But it's also instant gratification because you're reacting to, you're feeding off of the audience, you know, they're clapping, they're crying, whatever it may be, they're laughing. And um, theater is, uh, it's, it's an art. It's an art form, you know? Absolutely. And that's where I would say some of the best actors come from. Yes, most definitely. They, they definitely do. They hone their skills, even when they're on camera, when, when they're when they wrap that set, a lot of times they like to go back to theater to, you know, uh -huh. brush up on their skills and uh -huh. stay fresh and also become stronger at their talent. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. OK. All right. Um, so you're also a writer. Um, how long have you been writing? Not long, actually. Um, I had an idea. I was inspired about three years ago. And um, I was just very inspired. I just feel like God gave me this idea for a television show. And um, I've been working on it. Uh, it's really good. I've gotten some great feedback from notable people in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel that it is ready to be pitched to a network. And so that's what I'm working on. And you'd be surprised, you know, it may not be your, uh, your first love or something that you really thought that you would be capable of doing, such as writing. You know, I didn't start out writing, mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised uh, what you can do when you put the pen to the paper because you already have the ideas already given to you, it's in you. Right. So, you know, putting those ideas to paper, it just kind of flows once you're in that moment. You know, once you're in the groove, the words go to the paper and it just kind of happens. I surprised myself. <laughs> <laughs> I surprised myself. OK. And so and so this particular story that we're talking about, um, mm -hmm. I don't want you to give it away mm -hmm. um, and I don't want you to give any of the, uh, the you know, no log line or synopsis or anything like that. Yeah. My question to you is, how long did it take for you to write this project? Honestly, uh, the pilot is the part that's written. And I would say it literally took me less than a day. Once wow. I was on a roll, I was on a roll. <laughs> I, that's why I, said I surprised myself. Right, yes. You know, this, this whole time, since I came up with this, the concept, mm -hmm. I didn't try to write the pilot. Mm -hmm. Because I was just like, well, I'm not a writer. But once it's picked up, you know, they'll hire a team of writers. That's what they're there for. So that was my mindset. But mm -hmm. then I thought, nobody knows this story better than me. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go ahead and write it um, and possibly shoot the pilot. OK. Yeah. Now, it, being that nobody else knows this story better than you, is this a personal story or is this a story that, it, it, that comes from fiction? It's loosely based on me. OK. <laughs> So absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know who else could talk, could tell the story right. besides you? Um, and right. be it's not, it's not a biography or anything like that, but it's loosely based on me. I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, you've been writing for three years. Um, this particular story came to you. You were able to write it down in a day. Mm -hmm. um, had you? Uh, do you have any formal training in writing? No. Okay. So everything that you've done and have picked up has has been through what uh youtube university so um, to speak i would say i've seen so many scripts in my lifetime <laughs> okay absolutely. i know the formats i know how they're supposed to be uh composed i know um there are just certain things that you learn um mm -hmm. from experience you know um so i've seen enough scripts and i do do my research i do a lot of reading um mm -hmm. I have books, I have YouTube, I have, you know, there are examples everywhere nowadays. So, right. yeah, um, you know, if you've been on enough sets and you've seen enough scripts, you kind of, you know, some things stick. So. Exactly. You begin mm -hmm. to soak it in mm -hmm. and you, you learn and understand the format. 
um, you know, you know where things belong, where they don't belong, what is needed, what's not needed. And you also have the strength of coming from theater. So you know what it is, how it's supposed to read as a playwright. And you also know how it's supposed to read, um, you know, on screen um, mm -hmm. for film. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's also a strength if you come from theater or mm -hmm. if you, you know, are a playwright and come from theater mm -hmm. and you transition into writing. So you have two strengths, actually, um, from the acting acting world and then also from the writing world. Um, yes. And then you have a third hat, which is your director's hat. And mm -hmm. uh, you direct theater yes. or film. Okay. I direct theater. I have directed. Um, I directed a pilot um, okay. for uh, the company. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my first film. That was my debut as far as being a, a director of film, but um, primarily theater. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some of the projects that you were on um, that you did you star in them as well as direct or mm -hmm. were you? Okay. Yeah, I was wearing two hats. Chocolate City Records is. Uh, I will not have a role in this one, only because the nature of the uh, the plot and the characters that are in it, I just really didn't see a spot for me. And, mm -hmm. um, and I just really wanted to concentrate on directing because it's a musical and it's a lot of moving pieces to it, a lot to put together. And I just wanted to concentrate on directing. So, yeah, but I have had starring roles in the previous uh, works that we have done. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let me ask you, what exactly goes into directing a stage play? It, how how different is it um, from directing, you know, on camera? Um, well, the biggest thing is the rehearsals. You know, you have more time to, uh, with character development, helping mm -hmm. the actors to get to know their characters, develop their characters. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to have... Uh, uh, vocal rehearsals that are separate from acting rehearsals. They have to have dance rehearsals that are separate from acting rehearsals. So you have all of these separate uh, rehearsals and then you have to put all of that together, you know, and then I have to have meetings with the lighting team, the tech crew to make sure all of the sounds that our actors are lit well, um, right. have to meet with the music director to make sure that, you know, we, we know the songs that we're doing, that the band is ready, the band has been rehearsing. And it's basically putting all of these pieces of the puzzle, puzzle together. But mm -hmm. the most fun for me is um, the rehearsals with the actors. Because okay. it's fun, you know, it's right. fun. It's, 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 a, it's still a lot of work, though. Yes. It's still you a lot of work. And my I think my gratification is seeing the growth mm -hmm. from the table read to the stage. Right. And you start to see the project come alive um, uh -huh. as the characters interact with each other. Um, you start to see the, the build up, whether it's drama, comedy, musical, uh -huh. um, whatever the case may be, uh -huh. you can actually see those pieces come together as you're as you're yeah. making it happen. And then the growth of the actors as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, and it kind of sounds uh, from from the way you explain it, it kind of sounds like being a director in theater is wearing, almost wearing two hats. It's, it's almost like being a producer and the director at the same time. It's like being a director and an acting coach. Okay. Yeah. Director and an acting yeah. coach. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, let me ask you one more question about theater. <laughs> okay. No um, if you were, if, if I was an actor that was looking to get into theater or was just getting my start, or even if I wasn't just getting my start, but I wanted to audition for one of, the stage plays mm -hmm. um, that you have. Mm -hmm. What is it that you, you look for in an actor? We look for raw talent. We look for um, natural ability. Um, I feel like a lot of times people feel like, well, I don't have the experience or I don't have a headshot or I don't have a resume. Here's the thing. You have to start somewhere. Right. And we're not against um, a beginner, mm -hmm. you know, because there are so many people that have raw talent and you can kind of hone their skills as far as what theater is about. But if they have that raw talent, we see it. We mm -hmm. have an eye for it. So um, I would encourage anyone, regardless of your history or your resume or lack of experience, I would say come out to the audition anyway. There, we had, we've had several cast members where 
you know, it may have been their first production ever, right. but they had growth from the table read to the stage. Yeah. And honestly, by the time we got to the stage, especially with the Giz, I had tears in my eyes because oh. just seeing how far they had come, you know, right. especially being a green actor. Yes. To them becoming a little bit more polished. And you, you could probably also see the the level of comp confidence change the too. Confidence builds. Yeah. You know, you know, they sometimes just like, oh man, I've never done this. I don't know what I'm doing. It's just like, we got you. We're <laughs> right. not gonna let you fail. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And um the the timeline between table read to production and you know, the the actual day that you guys mm -hmm. um go live, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um how much time do you have to practice and to rehearse? So um, typically, depending on the amount of days that we do rehearse during the week, typically about, it takes about two and a half months, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't count the table reads and the meet and greet, and you know, everyone getting to know each other and the, uh, and the character development and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, it takes about two and a half months to totally have it together. Um, mm -hmm. We've gone as long as three months. You know, um, The Giz was a really big musical. Um, it had a lot of moving parts, set pieces, uh, <laughs> screen, everything. It was just, it was huge. And so yeah. um, that was a good three months. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. They had dance class. They had vocal rehearsal. So it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. And to, be, to also be able to dance and have the vocals, you know, I'm sure a certain part of it is singing as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah all we, those used to tell them, we used to tell them, go for a walk, get on a treadmill, you know, before rehearsal start, um, because it's a lot, you know, and it can take a toll um, if you're not used to it. So it's one of those things where you really have to get used to uh, get used to your vocal control. Right. Because singing and dancing and acting at the same time, is it looks easy, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> with your auditions and your self tapes, mm -hmm. um, what types of roles are you auditioning for? Um, you know what? I don't really have. Um, it's not really a set. It's not in a box, so to speak. Okay. Um, um, I'm a dramatic actor, um, but I also can do comedy. I'm not a stand up comedian, but I can mm -hmm. do comedy. Right. Um, so you know, I'm just looking for a role that will challenge me so to speak yeah okay. like i would love to play a schizophrenic really yes mm -hmm. <laughs> i would I, I find that interesting to to hear the types of roles that different actors want to play and to me when they tell me it seems so outside of who they seem to be and uh -huh. you know it doesn't seem like you would want to play a schizophrenic but mm -hmm. i i I also get the, I guess, the juxtaposition or the the uh, polarizing aspect of it because you want to be so far removed from who you actually are. And oh, absolutely. Character. It's yeah. about becoming, you know, right. and embodying that character. And um, I've played uh, someone who had mental illness before. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, a very disturbed <laughs> individual. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of like my dream role is to play a schizophrenic. Um, okay. So yeah, I just, I don't know. There's so many things that I want to do. And when the right role comes along, it'll come along. You know, it'll be my turn. So yeah.